opening prayer. Let us pray. On this, the day of your graduation, may God's blessing rest upon you. May his love light up your life. May hope spring from your heart as you look forward to tomorrow. May your days be filled with great adventures and discoveries. And may you live, love, and give of your best to the glory of God. Amen. Amen. Please now be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, I invite Mr. Ian Burrell, Chair of the Board of Governors, to formally open the ceremony. Pro Chancellor, Vice Chancellor, distinguished guests, members of the academic procession, graduands, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Board of Governors of Leeds Trinity University, it gives me great pleasure to welcome you to your graduation ceremony. Today's graduation ceremony is an occasion that you and your family and friends will never forget, and rightly so. Your degree represents a significant step forward in your life. It will create opportunities and pathways that may not otherwise have been available to you. You all took a very important step in planning your education and laying the foundations for your career by choosing to study here at Leeds Trinity. By graduating today, you will build on this foundation and create more career opportunities for your working life. It is now again up to you to take the next step in your career with the same resolve and determination. We hope that you all enjoy your special day and that the memories of your time at Leeds Trinity will inspire you to even greater achievement. With that positive thought, it gives me great pleasure to officially declare the ceremony open. I would like to invite our Vice-Chancellor, Professor Margaret House, to give her welcoming address. Thank you. Chancellor, Chair of the Board of Governors, distinguished guests, members of the academic procession, ladies and gentlemen, and especially you, our graduates, welcome to our 2017 summer graduation ceremonies. Today we are here to celebrate the success of all of you graduating from the School of Social and Health Sciences courses in psychology. This ceremony officially marks the formal completion of your studies and the beginning of fresh challenges as most of you start your professional careers. What you have achieved should not be underestimated. Intellectually and mentally demanding, studying for a degree requires a lot of hard work, perseverance and determination. It's also a major personal commitment and investment in your future, one of the biggest you will probably ever make. It demonstrates confidence and belief in your abilities and future prospects, and following years of hard work and dedication, you've done it. And today is a day of joy and celebration. And I have to say, it's my pleasure and honor to celebrate with you. And I know I speak for everyone here today when I say how proud we are of each and every one of you, and I sincerely hope you are of yourselves. You deserve to be. But today is also about the people who have supported you throughout your education journey. Parents, carers, grandparents, aunts, uncles, children, husbands, wives, partners, teachers, friends. You've all been there for our graduates throughout their entire educational journey. A journey which started long before Leeds Trinity University and one which may continue afterwards for some of those who want to go on to postgraduate and research studies. Your contribution to their achievement has been invaluable, and I would like to personally thank each and every one of you for all of the support that you have shown to our graduates throughout their journey. And I'm absolutely delighted to see so many of you here today to celebrate with them. So audience participation time now. 
I would like to ask the graduates to stand, to turn and face your family and friends, and to join with me in showing our appreciation. You know what's coming, don't you? I think you can do a bit better than that. Come on, show your appreciation. Thank you. You may sit. <laughs> Thank you. I'm also honored to share the altar with another group of people here today who've played a significant role in your success. These are my colleagues, your lecturers and tutors, who've been there for you throughout your studies, supporting you and providing you with knowledge and inspiration. We must also acknowledge the contribution of our professional and support staff, without whom the delivery of your degree programs, placements, and even events like today simply would not be possible. I'm incredibly proud of the academic, professional and support staff here at Leeds Trinity University. They work hard to ensure your success and it's fitting that we show our appreciation for their efforts. This time I would like to ask the staff on the altar and the staff within the chapel if they would stand and I ask you all to join with me in showing our appreciation. You're getting better. It's good. You're warming up. I'm also very proud of all of you, our graduates, and of your achievements. And just a few uh, particular ones to point out. So, Devon Bennett. Devon, as part of our volunteering program, volunteered for a few days a week at Doncaster Prison for 12 months, offering support to prisoners at risk. Abigail Huggan. Abigail took the role of women's officer at the Trinity University Students' Union, taking part in projects, launching campaigns, and attending conferences alongside her final year studies. And Helen Wilson, an interesting story. Helen graduates today not only with the support of her family and friends, but also her mum, who when she came along on the open day with Helen, liked it so much, decided to sign up for a program herself. So, so her mum, Christine, will be graduating later on this week. So, well done to all of you. We're very proud of each and every one of you. There were just a few slightly different stories. Leeds Trinity is your university and we'll be here for you whenever you need us, when your skills need refreshing, when you're ready for the next academic challenge. You now join a global community of over 25,000 alumni. They, like you, are exceptional individuals working in all sorts of organizations around the world as social workers, psychologists, research assistants, support workers, police officers, and teachers. And so as you graduate today, your future is bright and your opportunities are limitless. Your degree has provided you with knowledge and skills that are highly sought after. The vocational focus of your degree has given you the best possible opportunity to be ready for the world of work. And throughout your time with us, you have become independent adults, more rounded individuals, and you've hopefully made friends for life. You've maybe even met your future partner. Some have. These life experiences are just as important as the academic merits of a degree. And I'm sure I speak for everyone when I say that it has been a pleasure to watch you develop and grow into inspiring individuals with bright futures ahead of you. As our 50th anniversary year draws to a conclusion, we also want to take the opportunity to mark the involvement of a number of individuals who've made a significant contribution to the success of the university over the years with the award of an honorary fellowship. At this ceremony, we honor Mike Cockland, a previous principal here at Leeds Trinity, and Sister Marie de Carmel, a member of the teaching staff for over 20 years. Whilst Leeds Trinity University has developed and grown over the last 50 years, one thing has remained constant, 
our complete commitment to developing highly employable graduates who are able to make significant contributions and lasting contributions to society. That is why 97% of our graduates last year were in work or further study within six months of graduates, making us the number one university in Yorkshire for employability and 17th in the country. It's why we were ranked second nationally in the Guardian League table for value added, an achievement that reflects the academic and pastoral support given to our students to help them to achieve their best. And it's why more of our students are continuing year on year to achieve first class or upper second class awards. It's why this university exists and it's why we are so proud of each and every one of you on this special occasion. In addition to all of that, the National Union of Students voted us this year Student Union of the Year. Again, another significant achievement by our students themselves. So today we celebrate the success of you, our 2017 graduates. Everyone at Leeds Trinity appreciates that life is far from easy for today's students. Learning is a personal challenge. All of you will have faced your own particular challenges and all of you have overcome them. Your family and friends will have supported you. Many of you will have had to work to pay your way while you were studying. And all of you will have made sacrifices to ensure your success. Please remember this moment and this day. Remember the people around you and those that have been on your journey with you. Remember the many others who've supported you and contributed towards your achievement. Everyone here at Leeds Trinity is immensely proud of you and your success. Look to the future with optimism and take your talents out to the world. You are all exceptional people. Congratulations, well done, and good luck. to read the citations for the award of Fellow of the University. Oh, Chancellor. I have the honour to present to you Dr Mike Cochran, an outstanding leader and former principal of Trinity and All Saints College. Mike was appointed principal of Trinity and All Saints College in 1998, following seven years at the institution as assistant principal and dean of planning and development. Born in Ireland in 1945, he entered the Royal Air Force, initially as an instrumentation apprentice, before spending five years with the Franciscan community. He studied philosophy at the University of Kent and gained an MPhil from the University of Reading, before becoming a lecturer in philosophy at St David's University College and the University of Wales. Whilst in Wales, he gained significant experience of higher education, being a member of the Welsh Joint Education Committee and serving on the University of Wales Court, Council and Academic Board. On appointment as Principal of Trinity and All Saints in 1998, Mike encouraged the institution to work towards University College title and to pursue taught degree awarding powers, which the institution would eventually gain in 2009. Committed to placing students at the heart of the institution, Mike instigated extensive capital investment on campus, which significantly enhanced academic and social provision making the college a much more attractive destination for students in what was a very competitive environment. In 2001, work began on a three and a half million pound library and learning centre, which became known as the Andrew Keane Learning Centre. In 2004, a million pounds was invested in a new student support centre and a conference suite. And by 2005, funding was secured for a sports centre and Trinity Close Halls of Residence. In 2001, building on the college's mission to produce highly employable professional graduates as well as the college's position as the sector leader in communications and media, Mike oversaw the establishment of the Centre for Journalism. The centre provided an environment for academics and professionals to inform and educate the students and each other in the practices, responsibilities and social role of journalists and journalism. These remain key objectives of the university to this day. Mike had a passion for widening participation in higher education and wanted to offer opportunities for people from disadvantaged backgrounds to study here. Under his leadership, student numbers grew and applications for entry in 2004 rose by 20% from the previous year. 
Mike encouraged vocational academic degrees and the college collectively focused on employability for its graduates. In 2005, Trinity and All Saints topped the Sunday Times League table for graduate employment across all UK higher education institutions and student surveys indicated a very high rate of course completion and student satisfaction. Typical of Mike, he wants to acknowledge the role of staff at all levels. Under his leadership, they were dedicated to the common aims of making the campus more attractive for students, enhancing the student experience, and leading the institution towards becoming the university we know today. He wants the award of this honorary fellowship to reflect their outstanding contribution as well as his. I recommend him for honorary fellowship. Chancellor. I have the honour to present to you Sister Marie de Carmel, a long-serving, inspirational and influential lecturer at Trinity and All Saints College. A sister of the Cross and Passion Convent, Sister Marie joined Trinity and All Saints College in 1967, considering herself as one of the original community. She took part in the official opening of the college with Baroness Shirley Williams in 1968 and worked for more than 22 years as a lecturer at the institution. Born in Ireland, Sister Marie attended boarding school in Kilcullen from the age of eight. She admired the nuns at the school and joined them once she'd finished her education, undertaking two and a half years training before joining the convent on a trip to Africa. Unfortunately, whilst away, she caught malaria and was forced to return home to England, where she gained two years' experience as a teacher. In 1967, Sister Marie joined Trinity and All Saints College as a lecturer in home economics. Unfortunately, there were no kitchens, which made this a very difficult task. Instead, teaching focused on social sciences, and over time, Sister Marie went on to teach sociology and women's studies instead. She also took on the role of warden of the Female Hall of Residence at Crag Wood in Rawdon, a role she fulfilled for 13 years. With just 300 students on campus at the time, all Sisters of the Cross and Passion were actively engaged in the progression of their students into professional career paths. Supporting the vision of founding principal Andrew Keane and Sister Maria Augusta, Augusta Maria, Sister Marie facilitated teaching placements for her students. Many of the partnerships formed then remain important to us today. Always eager to learn herself, she was also one of the first 10 students to take advantage of courses offered by the Open University in 1971. And during one of her holidays from the college, Sister Marie travelled with 12 teachers in Leeds on behalf of the college to Botswana to visit the University of Botswana, Lesotho and Swaziland and undertake research around long distance learning for the Open University. As well as travel to Africa, she visited Sister of the Cross and Passion convent houses all over the world, including those in Chile, Peru, Argentina and Jamaica. In the late 1980s, aged 50 years, Sister Marie was the last of the sisters to leave the college. She'd always planned to change career, aged 50, and wanted to become a dentist. However, she was deemed too old and chose to train in the USA as a clinical pastor instead. She returned to the UK and worked as a counsellor at the Christie Hospital in Manchester for 12 years. Now retired, Sister Marie has remained devoted to the Leeds Trinity, sitting on the Board of Governors and attending university events on campus. She's remembered as an amazing colleague, dedicated and capable, who was considered a linchpin of the institution, and she fully deserves this recognition as an honorary fellow. Gentlemen, we now move to the conferment of the awards for our graduates. I invite Professor Carlton Cook to present awards from the School of Social and Health Sciences. Pro Chancellor, Vice Chancellor, 
I am pleased to present the following. For the award of Bachelor of Science in Forensic Psychology, I present the following graduand, who is also the recipient of the program prize, Coral Bagnall. Georgia, Bag uh, Georgia Barlow. <laughs> Timothy Barnes. <laughs> Devon Bennett. Kelsey Jane Bota. <laughs> Caitlin Bauer. <laughs> Caitlin Curran. Ellen Dimuentes. <laughs> Jessica Ellingham. <laughs> Jamie Lee Ferguson. Charlotte Fowler. <laughs> Daniel Hamill. <laughs> Rebecca Hannum. Laura Holmes. <laughs> Rachel Jones. <laughs> Rebecca Lane. <laughs> Kimberly Marshall. Kimberly McIver. <laughs> Amy Mountford. <laughs> Vanya Naeem. Abby Newby. <laughs> Olivia Pitts. <laughs> Kelsey Price. Alexandra Slivka. <laughs> Brooke Taylor. <laughs> Amy Varley. Katrina Wade. Yeah. 
Katie Warner. Chanel Wright. For the award of Bachelor of Science in Psychology, I present Alicia Amir. Simon Ashley. Mark Bartrop. Sam Best. <laughs> Leah Bottrell. <laughs> Melissa Bowley. Sophie Brennan. Emma Bridges. Remini Brooks. Katie Broughton. <laughs> Ella Cavney. <laughs> Katie Crowley. Georgia Crookshank. <laughs> Emily Evans. <laughs> Katie Howard. Abigail Huggan. <laughs> ben Labette. <laughs> Ellie Mae Long. Charlotte Mackney Hudson. <laughs> Jenny Martin. <laughs> Matthew Mackay. Lucy McNay. <laughs> Julieta Mikolajczyk. <laughs> Leanne Milne. Bethany Oscroft. Charlotte Roberts. Rosemary Rogerson.
John Strongman. <laughs> Katie Taylor. <laughs> Abby Williams. Amy Williams. Kate Williams. Helen Wilson. Kaylee Woodroff. <laughs> the following graduand is also the recipient of the Program Prize and the British Psychological Society Prize. Chloe Woolmer. For the award of Bachelor of Science in Psychology and Child Development, I present Lucy Bailey. <laughs> Lauren Baker. <laughs> Charlotte Barwell. Catherine Burton. <laughs> Olivia de Souza. <laughs> Rebecca Donkin. Charlotte Hanney. Charlotte Harrison. The following graduand is also the recipient of the program prize, Catherine Hobbs. Alex Holmshaw. <laughs> Emily Howard. <laughs> Sophie Howell. Charlotte Humphreys. <laughs> Laura Humphrey. <laughs> Alice Pendlebury. Sophie Scott. <laughs> Abigail Speed. <laughs> Abigail Thewlis. Kate Thoburn. <laughs> Lily
Lily Whittam Tonks. <laughs> For the award of Bachelor of Science in Sports Psychology, I present Elizabeth Hodgkinson. Shay Kingswood. The following graduate is also the recipient of the program prize. Rory Turnbull. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes the presentation of awards from the School of Social and Health Sciences. the Pro-Chancellor, Mr. Ed Anderson, to give his address. Vice-Chancellor, Chair of the Board of Governors, graduates, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, it's a great pleasure to address you today as the University's Pro-Chancellor. And congratulations to all of you who've just graduated and congratulated, congratulations to all of you for negotiating that long walk across the hall <laughs> without falling over. It's a great privilege to share in your celebrations today and it's significant that we hold our graduation ceremonies here in our chapel, reflecting our faith foundation and the values that we hold dear here at Leeds Trinity University. I'd like to offer just a few thoughts to our new graduates. Firstly, as Margaret has said, we are incredibly proud of you and you should take pride in your achievements. And I know you will appreciate the support that you've had from your families and friends and particularly the staff here at Leeds Trinity University. And I know you will remember to thank them and that sentiment applies not just today, but to everything that happens to you after you leave here. Take pride in what you achieve and always make a point of thanking those who help you along the way. Secondly, I would encourage you to think the unthinkable. There'll be times in your lives when opportunities occur which involve an element of risk. So open your mind to those opportunities and be prepared to stretch yourselves. And yes, be prepared to take some risks. I can think of many examples where people have been told, no, you definitely would not be able to do that. But actually, when they've stretched themselves, they've found that they can do great things. Our capacity as human beings to take on new challenges when we're given the opportunity and when we receive the right help in preparing to face those challenges can be truly amazing. Last year, four working mums from Yorkshire, aged 45 to 51, became the oldest all-woman crew to row across an ocean. They rowed 3,000 miles across the Atlantic in 68 days, overcoming storms, a power failure, and a hurricane along the way, and raising valuable funds for the new Maggie's Cancer Center here in Leeds and for the Yorkshire Air Ambulance. Their story has been captured in a recently published book. It shows how people can achieve their dreams despite everyone saying it is impossible, and it is inspirational. My third suggestion is that you make sure that you do things in your lives that will leave the world a better place. This, of course, relates to the faith foundation of Leeds Trinity University, which I referred to earlier. 
Most of you will not be Catholics, but I'm sure you will all take something of the Catholic values and ethos with you when you leave Leeds Trinity. There are many opportunities to volunteer in order to help to make a difference. In Leeds alone, there are around 3,500 community or charitable organizations doing amazing work. I know many of you have been involved in volunteering, and we heard some stories earlier which were fantastic during your time as a student. And I'm sure that as you graduate today, you'll be determined to take up some of the many opportunities to help to make a difference. Last year, I had the privilege of attending a dinner in Huddersfield where I found myself sitting next to a recently elected member of parliament. I found out during the meal that she'd been brought up locally, attended the local school, and was so proud to have been elected the member of parliament for Batley and Spen here in West Yorkshire. She told me that she'd previously run Oxfam's operation in New York, but the thing that really impressed me was her genuine commitment and determination to do her best for her constituents. I came away deeply impressed, and I could well understand the outpouring of grief after her tragic death just a year ago. Joe Cox was an inspirational figure who really did want to make a difference. So my thoughts today are, be proud of your achievements and remember to thank those who help you along the way. Be ambitious and ready to try things that may appear impossible. And be determined to do things in your lives that will help to make the world a better place. Warm congratulations once again to every single one of you who's graduated today, and I wish you every success in the future. Thank you. speech. I now invite John Strongman, a student of the graduating cohort, to give the vote of thanks. Chancellor, Vice Chancellor, Chair of the Board of Governors, respected lecturers and fellow graduates. This is an incredible honour to stand up here and deliver this message of thanks. So firstly, thank you very much for the psychology department for this opportunity. When I received the email asking me to deliver this speech, I was initially excited. I eagerly accepted. However, that excitement quickly subsided into what in polite circles I think is called an oh heck moment when I realized that I had to actually write the thing. Where does anyone begin in thanking those who have helped us all throughout these three years? I speak for us all sat here today when I say we wouldn't be graduating were it not for the incredible support and help offered to us by the Leeds, uh, by the university and all of its staff. From frantically emailing lecturers and TAs, worried about if our essays were going in the right direction and receiving back calming words of encouragement and support, to the placements team for helping us secure fantastic professional placements to help broaden our views of how we can use our knowledge in the real world and in practical ways. And also the fantastic services offered to us by student support, whether it is a rant in Judith or Emma's office or a heart to heart in the care of Sue. I know many of us on occasion, uh, sorry, I know that for me on many occasion, knowing that there were many a door I could knock on for help and guidance was an incredible comfort. It may be an old psychology cliche that you can't help someone unless they want to help themselves, but I feel it rings especially true on a day like today. Because every one of us graduating today has made great sacrifices to be here. We've had to sacrifice our sleep, pulling all-nighters to finish papers, sacrifice time with friends or family to complete some research, and in my case, sacrifice some of my sanity trying to understand my SPSS output on my final year <laughs> research project. 
And I know myself, like many other graduates sitting here today, have always been fascinated by people, by their behaviors, their motivations, and probably our own little voices in our heads that say, just carry on, move over that next great hurdle, move past that next great challenge. It is impossible to determine how much the help we have received from others has influenced us to be here in this room today. The constant talks and meetings we could have with our lecturers, to the 3 a.m. heart-to-hearts playing FIFA, or with our friends in the car park of a McDonald's after an emergency dash to the drive through <laughs> All of these little moments helped push us to where we are today. And now here we are, about to join a fraternity that not many people get the privilege to be a part of. Personally, that means a great deal to me. I was a council estate kid, educated in a special school, and left that school with three GCSEs. No one in the family had gone to uni before me. My mother was the one who pushed me, pushed me to always go that little bit further. Left school with three GCSEs? Get yourself to college and resit them. She knew how much getting to university meant to me, and I took a breaking down into tears over the phone on my A-levels results day as a sign that she was happy I got in. My mother sadly passed away at the end of my first year. She was to me, like I'm sure your parents are to many of my other fellow graduates, that guiding light in times of darkness, that clarity in times of obscurity. It was a time I struggled with, but a time I could not have got through were it not for the help, care and support I received from my family and the staff at university. They helped me rediscover my voice, voice of motivation, that light in the darkness, and helped me redouble my efforts. I used my experience to help others. I now work with the National Citizen Service, helping mentor young people to do great things in their community. I work as a pupil referral unit, helping, amongst others, young offenders attain an education and hopefully show them that a kid from their type of background can one day be delivering a speech very much like this. And hopefully, I'll be staying on at Leeds Trinity University to research the same condition that took something so very precious from me. I've shared all this because of one simple thing. I would not be here today, graduating, if it were not for the fantastic care of my family and the Leeds Trinity staff. It is one thanks I perhaps can never repay. I'm sure I've been talking for long enough now, and hopefully it hasn't been too arduous to listen through. But my final thoughts I wish to leave you all with this is this. Whilst we could have and have received all the help in the world, it would all have been for nothing were we not willing to help ourselves. To take the advice of others, take the support and build ourselves up from it and use it to create something. The final thanks then should be to that little voice in our heads. The voice that I hope we take with us from this room today and listen to when in whatever our future endeavors may be, further academic studies or work, just carry on, move over that next great hurdle, move past that next great challenge. Because as Ophelia in Hamlet so eloquently put it, we know what we are, but not what we may be. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes the ceremony. You are all warmly invited to the reception to be held in the atrium. And now may I please ask you to stand for the academic procession.